Hello friends, welcome to this introductory session of the course Statistical Inference in which we are understanding the syllabus and also the marking system and also the reference books which are related for this course and for further understanding of this course. Friends, uh, this course consists of two units. So one unit which is related with point estimation and the another unit which is related with grammar of inequality and methods of estimation. Well, we know that a group of all statistical units under study regarding certain characteristic is called a population. And the value which represents a population is called as a parameter. Always the population parameter is unknown and we can know this population parameter through sample statistic. The sample statistic is an estimator. An estimator is a function of the sample. That is, it is a rule that tells you how to calculate an estimate of a parameter from a sample. So there are different estimators may be possible for the same parameters. Therefore, we need to find out what are the good estimators. And to find out good estimators, these are the four properties of a good estimators. So one property is called as unbiasedness. The second property is nothing but efficiency. The third is consistency and the fourth one is sufficiency. So these, all these are related with the characteristics or the properties of a good estimator. So we will see all these characteristics of a good estimator one by one when actually we start with the course. But before uh, we start, before we can understand, so what would be this uh, unbiasedness? Friends, uh, as we know that this theta is nothing but my population parameter and always the value of theta is unknown to us. What we have to do, we have to know this parameter through the sample statistic and Tn is my sample statistic. So this T stands for the sample statistic. Suppose the property of unbiasedness tells that if expected value of Tn is equal to theta means the expected value of the sample statistic is same as population parameter then this Tn is properly representing my parameter theta. So we can understand this unknown parameter theta with the help of this T. And when this t is properly representing the theta, suppose as per the property of unbiasedness, as per the property of unbiasedness, we can say that this expectation of Tn is same as my parameter theta. So this is one property. The another property is efficiency. Friends, you may be wondering that there are many sample statistics. So there are many sample statistics like T1, T2 up to Tn which are unbiased estimator of theta. So that means even though the population parameter is same, but there are various statistic values which are estimating the same population parameter. Then naturally the question arises, out of all these T1, T2 up to Tn, which one should be the best estimator for theta? So there, there comes the role of efficiency. So the next stage, what we have to find out is to go and find out the variance of all these statistics. So that means calculate the variance of T1, variance of T2 and variance of Tn as vari variance is nothing but the variation. So if there is a small variation then we can say that it is efficient. It is more efficient as compared with the other statistic. So suppose if the value of variance of T1 is less than variance of T2 this means what the variation of this statistic T1 is less than this T2, this concludes that T1 is more efficient than T2. So why this is so? Because the variation in T2 is more. We can say the variation is more in T2, so therefore it is less efficient as compared with T1. So also there is one more property what we call it as a consistency. So what this proper property says? So we can say this, that the sequence Tn of estimators is said to be consistent sequence of estimators for this parameter theta if this Tn 
tends to theta in p means what tn converges to theta in probability as n tends to infinity so friends uh, you uh, you may be understanding this concept as the sample size n tends to infinity the data so i mean the values of x1 x2 xn are practically the whole population and it is intuitively appealing to desire that a good sequence of estimators tn should be one for which the values of the estimator tend to concentrate near theta as the sample size increases so that as the sample size increases the value of tn should be close to theta then we can say that this tn is consistent estimator for the parameter theta this is one more characteristic of the this uh, estimator and what about this sufficiency the property of sufficiency tells that whatever the information contained in sample about the population should be sufficient so that means i mean what i say here is a statistic t is sufficient or we can say this is an exhaustive if it contains all the information about the parameter theta that is contained in the sample so we can say the sample is sufficient to find out or to know the unknown parameter theta so if this is so then we can say that an estimator is a sufficient estimator so these are the four important properties of an estimator and once we understand all these properties then we can go and understand in uh, in unit number 2 what are what is meant by kramer rao inequality and the methods of estimation wherein if the fisher information is same as the sufficiency that means the fisher information also gives us the information which is sufficient to understand the population parameter theta as in case of kramer rao equality inequality we are understanding the lower bound for the variance of tn so the as in uh, in efficiency we are calculating the variance but the what is the exact lower bound so there are see there are the variances but we need to understand which is the lower value of this variance so this is the lower bound so the value which takes the lower bound that can be understood with the help of kramer rao inequality and in methods of estimation there are two methods so one is uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimation and the second one is method of movements so this is all about the statistical inference course we will see all these things when we start with the course so what about the marking system so this course is of 56 marks and this 56 mark is divided into uh, the two units the unit 1 is of uh, 32 marks and the unit 2 is of 24 marks and the books which are required for uh, this course so these uh, these are the books if you see these books a first course in parametric uh, inference by bk kale statistical inference by rotgi theory of point estimation by lehman modern mathematical statistics inference theory of estimation by and this is uh, the statistical inference by srivastava and srivastava you can go through all these books and so that uh, the concept of all this statistical inference since it is a core course in statistics you should uh, understand this course very carefully and this is also uh, useful uh, in your next uh, further understanding of statistics further learning of the statistics so with this uh, hope i can uh, uh, tell you uh, much uh, about this uh, course statistical inference 1 we will start this uh, course and uh, so i am uploading uh, many videos on all these uh, properties one by one uh, when uh, uh, in due course so till then goodbye